Today I am throwing 250ml tumblers. Uh, I've got an order for 100 150ml tumblers and 100 250ml tumblers. And you can see the 150ml ones waiting to be glazed there. I'm working my way through the 250. So this is a process that obviously I've got fairly quick at because I'm doing that many. So I just run through um, what I'm doing at each stage because um, I'm kind of in the middle of production. Well, I, I have some at each stage, so I'm going to show you the throwing and then I've got more. Um, and I'm actually not recording these in the order that I'm going to show you them, so it might be a bit more disjointed because I've recorded the other stages before I'm recording this. But I've got some to throw today, some to trim, wire off today, and some to trim today. Um, and I kind of work through the process like that. Are we actually in focus? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, first thing, I'm throwing them with 260 grams of clay, just to give myself a little buffer. But generally I throw with the weight in grams as I want to hold in mil. Then I have this as a very rudimentary guide for size. I've got um, my laser set up on something so it's always the same height. And then this is giving me the diameter. So where that cross hits, that's where I'm throwing to. Uh, and that means that I can throw them consistently day after day to rough it, or I'm aiming for the same size even if I don't hit it perfectly. I'm throwing these with uh, a white, what they call earthenware, but it's a cone six earthenware um, from Pottery Craft called white earthenware throwing, I believe, or white throwing earthenware, some variation of those words. Um, one of their cheaper but better plays from the tests that I did. And the reason I'm using that as opposed to the PF580, which I've decided is going to be my replacement clay, is that it's, I got a few bags of it, um, and because it's softer, I don't know that I necessarily want to throw big things with it. It's a bit soft out the bag for my liking. But for tumblers, it's perfect because trying to center 100 grams, 150 grams of hard clay is really difficult because you don't get the leverage that you would when it's more clay because it doesn't fill your hand. It's hard to get the pressure in. So actually having a softer clay out of the bag is really useful for these. So I'm using that clay instead of the, the PF580. And then I can basically Oh, and I should have said, um, if you haven't seen it before, the bat system I'm using is the Hartley and Noble Russian doll bat system. And what makes it so brilliant is that there's a big insert, but you get these nested inserts. So rather than throwing on something the full size of the insert, I'm using the tiny inserts, which makes uh, this much more viable. Otherwise, you'd need a massive studio to throw hundreds of something if you were going to throw them on bats and obviously as I said I've recorded these in the wrong order so I know I've already addressed it but um, but you'll be seeing this bit first but the reason that I throw small things on bats rather than um, off the hump, which I know some people will ask about and if you're not familiar with the term throwing off the hump is just where you center a much larger ball of clay and then take a small amount of clay off the top, throw a piece, cut it off and then keep doing that till you've used the whole ball um, which is a very efficient way to throw I don't like it personally because I like to throw the pieces to essentially the final thickness. So 
what you'll see in the subsequent videos is I don't trim much clay off these. This is more or less as I want it. Um, and in order to get a piece off the hump successfully, you've got to leave more clay on. So when you pick it up, you don't crush it. So generally what you do is you throw it with a thicker base and then you'd, you'd leave a bit more clay so you can pick it up from there. Um, you still might warp it slightly. Um, but you, you give yourself a lot more trimming and a lot more wedging because you've got to prepare the clay and so on and so forth. So I prefer throwing on bats with the Hartley & Noble um, Russian Doll small bats you can fit. I can fit 30 of them on, a, on one of my boards that I've got over here, which are not that big. So very space efficient. Um, and then the advantage, as you'll see in the next video in a second, is that you can leave them to dry on the bats and trim do your first pass of trimming while you've got access to both sides. So that's how I prefer to do it. Um, and they take roughly my timing to something like two minutes to throw, a minute and a half to trim and then wire off, and then a minute to do the final trim, um, which when scaled for 200 pieces is still a, a big total of time, but it means the whole thing is quite streamlined. So this approach would work with anything. I mean, you can finesse when you're making a couple of pieces, you can spend a bit more time finessing them. Um, obviously, you want to make, you want to have an efficient process when you're trying to do 200 or something, which is what this is. This is kind of my switch off my brain and throw as fast as possible sort of process. Um, I'll show you the other stages now. Um, obviously, this video is a lot longer than just literally how long it would take me to make one because there's lots of talking. But um, overall, the process is about five minutes from start to uh, trimmed and ready to bisque fire. Right, so this is essentially the next day. I think these are pieces that I threw yesterday. I leave them to dry on the little bats overnight. And the next day they can go back on the wheel and they are immediately centered and held in place. So it makes trimming a lot easier. And then at this stage, they're not quite leather hard. They're approaching it, you don't, so a balancing act, you don't want them to be too hard because then you can't wire off cleanly, but you don't want them to be so soft that they'll distort when you try and trim them. So um, you have to find what works for your clay, but they're sort of on the soft side of leather hard at the moment. And also, because of the way they're drying, they'll always be slightly drier at the rim than the base, which is what you want, uh, particularly for something like travel mugs where I trim a notch in for the lid to, to grip. Um, all I'm do, using is a triangle turning tool um, to in my recommended tool playlist because there's a video on them. Um, I do know this, uh, they're hard to come by in other countries or this one's hard to come by in other countries. They're sold by Pottery Crafts in the UK but I did find someone selling them. I think it might have been Dolan. I'll find the link to, and I'll post it in the, the video for these because there's a, an American company making the same tool but with a, a nicer handle basically. Anyway, um, what I do is to start with, I smooth out and put a swirl in the bottom just because there's the lines left from the sponge. Um, and also it compresses it slightly more. I'm not sure it makes that much difference really. Uh, one problem I'm having at the moment is because it's winter and I've been throwing a lot there I use just my fingertips to do this and the more cracked the skin gets the the more lines it leaves as I do that so it's another reason to try and take care of your skin but it's very difficult when you work with clay and it's winter anyway so I smooth out the bottom and then what I do is I check the wall thickness and you can see what you're doing while it's on the bat so you can actually kind of check as you go but I just take off any excess at the base and I've thrown them the rims pretty much where I want it so if it was a bit chunkier I'd um, 
trim some off at this stage. So I don't need to with these. And then this is just a strip of plastic. Um, and I just, this is the bag that the clay comes in. They tend to get worse over time as the, the plastic stretches. But the nice thing is, obviously, because it's the bag the clay comes in, I'm always getting more of them. So I'll try and find a good bit. But because it's smooth plastic, and because this clay is a smooth clay, you can burnish it till it's um, almost glossy smooth. Uh, and it will keep that. So we've got a nice rounded rim, it's fairly sharp. And the thickness should be pretty much exactly where we want it. Small amount to take off after it's dried. And then I just wire them off, depending on, I don't know how wet it is, but and depending on how wet it is, you can be more or less careful. That feels dry enough to pick up without distorting with less even pressure. But if you've got a wetter piece, try and cup it as much as possible. Um, take it off and then I leave it to dry on my old wooden bats, just basically something that will allow water to pass down but not quite the same rate as it can dry up, which means that when you come to trim it tomorrow, um, the rim is a bit drier than the base, but I will leave them covered with plastic. So I'm gonna trim a bunch more of them, stick them on those, cover them with a bit of bubble wrap, and then come back tomorrow and do the final trim. This is the third stage. So these will be another day drier thrown two days ago. Um, and if I've done the first two stages right, there's not that much trimming to do. So basically, the wall thickness should be pretty much even. So it's just a, taking it a small amount of clay off the bottom and the side, and then burnishing it and defining a foot, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, using the Giffen Grip, I've got a video on those in the recommended tools. Just a cheap loop trimming tool. I've got my two ribs that I use for everything. It's a green mud tools one, and this is a, a soft, I think it's Color Rubia one. Uh, and then I've recently got the Zeme version of the ball stylus tools, which I have also done a video on, and they are looking very good so far. Um, but basically, all I'm looking to do here is just take off a little bit of excess clay like that. This is a smooth clay, so by burnishing the foot I reduce the amount of sanding that I have to do with them to basically nothing, because there's only a very fine grog, so um, it will stay as smooth as I get it now, it will stay throughout the firing. Then all I'm trying to achieve here is what I'm trying to get is the neatest possible foot I can with the least amount of processes required. So the best way I've found of doing that is if you get a ball stylus tool, then you can compress to define a foot ring. And then I add a spiral out just to, for aesthetic purposes really. It also kind of makes sure that it's compressed across the whole thing so the foot ring is raised above the rest of the base so it won't rock on it. Uh, and then I smooth that transition out, just make sure the whole thing is smooth. And what you get is a defined foot ring with a nice pattern in the base, all very, very smooth, burnished smooth. So it'll keep that smoothness in the firing. Um, and if I was doing it and not talking, it takes under 60 seconds per piece. So when you're doing a, a larger job such as this, it allows you to work through them pretty quick. And then I'm just doing logo stamp on the side for these. Um, and that is it. So when you're just rattling through them, each process takes one to two minutes. Um, when you're doing 200 or something, obviously that ends up being quite a lot of time. You know, one minute per process, plus a little bit, uh, is a four hours total. So obviously 
if it's two minutes to throw, that's a working day is worth of throwing, and so on and so forth. But um, it's nice having a pretty efficient process for doing bigger jobs such as this, because if you were taking five minutes where you could be taking one, that's two days, two eight hour days of time wasted just in that process. So it's worth having efficient processes. And um, I think this, as an approach, not only is it efficient, but I, I think it's, um, it results in the highest quality of pieces because their, their shape is preserved on the back rather than throwing off the hump. There's no warping at the rim, so they stay round. Um, the face is nice and thin without much trimming because they're thrown on the back again. Um, there's just there are a few advantages to doing it this way as well. It's possibly what well, I mean. It is slower up front than throwing them off the hump would be, but. I think you save the time elsewhere and you get a higher quality piece at the end of it. And the real challenge, if there is one, is just making sure the dryness is right on that many pieces across multiple days. But when you get in the rhythm of it, it's relatively easy. So I'll have kind of I'll throw 20 and take about an hour, trim 20, take about an hour, or oh, wire off take about an hour and then trim probably well I mean I say an hour should be less than that but that sort of ballpark so you can in a few hours a day just keep 20 a day going through and then it's not an overwhelming task at any point and you get them done pretty quick